You're about to see a tiny cannon that's way more dangerous than it looks. One shot, and the tile underneath is destroyed. But that's not the real problem. The real problem is what happens after it fires. Because the last time I tested it the cannon didn't just shoot the ball, it vanished. No sound of it landing. No sign of where it went. Just gone. In a moment, you're gonna watch the fuse burn, the flash hit, and the whole thing disappear right in front of you. And when you see it, you'll be asking the same question I still am. Where did it go? The main piece where the ball sits actually comes from an air compressor fitting. A couple of other small bits to connect it all together. And that's pretty much the body done. Now for the fun part, the powder. I'm scraping the sulfur right off matchstick heads, but you've gotta be careful here. I'm using a wooden stick, no metal at all, because we don't want any sparks. It's slow, but trust me, it's worth taking your time. Once that's ready, well you'll see exactly how much power this tiny thing can really pack. You know scraping sulfur like this always reminds me of a story I heard about a guy who tried to make his own fireworks for a village festival. He spent days carefully working, making sure every step was perfect, but when the big day came, instead of the fireworks going up, the whole table went up. Nobody got hurt, but the explosion was so loud, they say it scared the cows on the other side of the valley. So yeah, I take my time with this part. Nice and slow, no metal tools, no rushing, just patience. Once all the sulfur scraped off I start pressing it down with a wooden stick, breaking up the chunks and making it as fine as possible. The smoother it is, the more evenly it burns, and with something like this, even a small difference can completely change how it behaves. It's kind of strange though. The more you work with this stuff, the more you realize it doesn't really look dangerous at all. But deep down, you know that once a flame touches it, things can change in an instant. Now it's time to start putting this little cannon together. The main piece, that air compressor fitting, screws neatly into the connector. And just like that, it's already starting to look like something that shouldn't be in my hands. It's kind of satisfying though, watching a few random parts slowly turn into something with real power behind it. Every twist of the thread feels like we're one step closer to seeing just how far this thing can push a tiny ball, and maybe push its luck too. Before loading the sulfur, I drop a tiny piece of tissue into the air compressor fitting. It's just there to act as a stop, so when the powder goes in from the other side, it stays right where I want it. Now here's the thing, if you load sulfur loose, it'll burn, but if you press it down and pack it tight, that's when things get dangerous. Very dangerous, because now when you fire it, it doesn't just burn, it explodes. And that's exactly what we've done here. Now the sulfur goes in from the other side of the cannon, pressed down firmly with the end of a pencil. No metal tools, only wood, because even the smallest spark could set it off early. I take my time with this step, making sure it's packed just right. Loose powder will just burn. But when it's pressed tight like this, the energy has nowhere to go until the moment of ignition. That's when things get dangerous. Very dangerous. The last time I tried this, the reaction was far stronger than I expected. The cannon didn't just launch the ball, it launched itself out of sight, and we never saw it again. The force ripped through the air, and the tile underneath shattered into pieces. This is a metal plumbing cap, half-inch internal thread, and before anything goes inside, I need to drill a small hole for the fuse. It's only a few millimeters across, but it's more important than it looks. Back in the day, even big cannons depended on this tiny opening to fire. If it was too small, the pressure could build until the cannon itself broke apart, too big, and the shot would be weak. So getting this just right matters, and here, it could be the difference between a small pop and a blast you'll remember. Before the plumbing cap goes on, I'm making a small washer so the sulfur stays in place and the fuse sits exactly where I need it. Nothing fancy, just cutting it from a matchstick carton. I trim it into a round shape, then cut a small hole right in the center. The fuse slides through, and I lock it in with a little hot glue so it can't move. This way when the cap is screwed on, the fuse is already lined up and ready. Now I make a small hole in the sulfur, just deep enough for the fuse to fit snugly. It's a small detail but it keeps the flame right where it needs to be, when the moment comes. With that in place, everything is lined up, secured and ready for the final assembly. From here, we're only a few steps away from ignition.
With the fuse in place, it's time to close it up. I take the half-inch plumbing cap and screw it on tight, sealing everything inside. Then, just for fun, and maybe for a little style, I'm giving it a set of wheels. They're actually just bearings I had lying around glued on with super glue. No, they don't really make it faster, but they make it look like it could race across the floor. It's funny, this might be the last time I ever see this cannon in one piece. Because in my last test it vanished so fast I couldn't even track where it went. But for now at least, it's looking good. Next comes the payload. I drop the ball into the barrel, then tear off a small piece of tissue paper that goes in right after the ball pressed gently into place so it holds the shot steady until firing. It's a tiny trick, but it keeps the ball from falling out and makes sure all the force is pushing in one direction. Everything's lined up, loaded, and ready. And if this goes anything like the last time, well you might see it fire but you won't see where it lands. Everything's ready, the cannon's loaded, the target's set, and once I fire there's no turning back. The blast was so strong, the tile underneath shattered, the cola can exploded 5 meters away, and the cannon, it vanished without a trace. I've searched everywhere, the grass, the fence line, even beyond the target, and there's still no sign of it. But here's the thing, if I do find it, I'm going to fire it again. And next time, I'll be pushing it even further than before. I don't know if it'll survive, and honestly, I don't know if I should, but when it happens, you'll want to see it. So make sure you're here for it.